Hey guys, what's up? It's Zola and today I'm going to be having a look at the final part of our free parter on text. And I've shown you a few things and um, from the likes I've seen this has been quite well received. It's something obviously people struggled with so um, I'm glad this has helped out so far. So what we're going to do today is just have a look at some of the last options that I haven't been through. The first one is this per character 3D and what this will do is, um, so you know that we can change the layer 3D by clicking here. Per character 3D allows you to basically do these kinds of effects, so the um, flip, um, Y rotate kind of requires, requires the per character 3D just because what we're dealing with here is a text object and the text by default um, if I if I take per character 3d off um, is just seen as a whole block whereas when you turn on 3d um, you see it's not really gonna work whereas if you if we put this effect on it needs to have uh, character 3d so basically the long and short of it is per character 3d allows you to uh, see each individual letter as its separate element and rotate it in 3D space, so hopefully that makes sense. All these are basic properties that you can animate in the way I showed you in the second lesson, so um, just to show you what that would be like, so you could skew it and um, you know, and basically straighten it out and all that kind of stuff. Um, if I delete skew here, um, and what this is, is now I've got range selector and I'm just adding different properties. So you can do all of these at once with transform. Uh, fill call I'll show you in a minute. Stroke width is obviously only going to um, apply if you have a stroke. So if I give this a bigger stroke and then we move through, we can have the stroke kind of shrinking down, which is kind of neat if you're using the stroke. And uh, the way you could do this is have the stroke um, the same color as the fill and then that way you're going to get a kind of like almost like a scaling effect um, because you won't really be able to tell what's the stroke and what's the fill so that's kind of useful as well um, that's usually the only way I'll use the stroke is if I make it the same color as the fill because then you can actually do some interesting things with just uh, manipulating the stroke but um, that's one for another day so uh, as we're moving on we're going to have, um, and I apologize for my voice, I've got a bit of a cold right now, really bad sore throat, so um, I'm sorry if I sound a bit under the weather. Uh, tracking is, I remember when I started using After Effects, this was the effect I was looking for, because um, what would happen, would I, I would want the uh, letters to animate this way, and it was so hard. So first of all, you uh, you need to remember your tracking will work in the way your text is aligned with the paragraph. So if I align left here and then increase the tracking, you see it's going to go start from here, no movement, and then more and more as you go right. Um, if I change this to middle, we're going to see that it's going to do this from the middle. So this is probably one of the effects I use the most. And you don't even have to uh, do an offset for this because only thing I will do is actually just keyframe the tracking uh, which does this kind of effect which is um, you know uh, probably the f I, f I believe it was one of the first effects I use in uh, the groin twister montage back in the day down in the bottom corner I think I had like a loading it just said loading and it would do this and kind of fade in and then just fade out before it stopped moving as well which is always kind of like a nice effect um, so yeah we have we have tracking so I'm going to delete tracking here delete and delete these opacity keyframes let's keep going down uh, character offset and value uh, obviously these two can are pretty much self-explanatory anchor and spacing uh, character offset is kind of interesting because what you can do is uh, have almost like a sorting effect and as your and there's some really nice presets already built into After Effects for this, but this is how you do it. So you can actually go and almost like in the big airports when the things, uh, all the, you have the big screens and they kind of change from being jumbled letters to uh, sorting themselves out. So kind of cool to make like a sorting effect. Um, uh, and, you know, value is kind of similar, um, but only if you've got numbers, I believe. Let me just check that's right and I'm not talking crap. Actually, no, I think um, I think even when you don't have values. Um, so what this does is instead of it being more random, uh, 
Ah, uh, what it does is it, I, I believe it uses like all uh, things in the keyboard, whereas character uh, offset is just like up and down in the alphabet. So uh, that one adds a bit more randomness, I guess. But uh, I usually use character offset if I'm honest, um, if I'm going to be doing those kinds of effects. So, um, Wiggle It. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you now is. Um, so by default we've got the range selector this is what I spent a kind of load of time explaining the other day in uh, in terms of animating stuff uh, because a range selector is the easiest one to understand there is actually two more and if I come here and I add a selector you'll see so we've got range which we can do to isolate certain effects on certain letters and drive it through and all that stuff like I showed you but today I want to show you Wiggly as well. There is an expression one, but as as I've said before, I don't really use expressions. Uh, I believe most of the stuff that can be done without expressions in terms of text uh, is fairly straightforward. I've never really found myself uh, needing to do an expression uh, selector, so I don't think I've ever used that in my life. Wiggly, however, if we uh, what we're going to animate, this is why I left out. Um, fill color. So what I'm going to do here is go to fill color in RGB, which is um, and I'm going to make this black. Uh, and let me get rid of that. And we're going to see um, this is what a wiggly selector does. So um, you have the max and minimum values here. If you bring these closer together, you're going to get the effect almost close up on itself and be less less random, I guess. Um, so there you go like here we've got barely any movement and then as I go more we're going to see um, a bit more of the effects being dialed in and if I go all the way from minus 100 to 100 you can see most if I increase this wiggles a second I'm going to see it's going absolutely nuts um, this is kind of like the Kanye West which he nicked from into the void um, kind of look and if you bring the correlation together you're going to have this effect be either more staggered or more uniform which uh, if we do this here there you go that's the kind of um, the kind of Kanye West from the all of the lights video I believe it was when he stole that um, so temporal phase basically you can just rotate to a different time in um, in the effect so uh, the reason I'm using black here is because as it we're basically cycling RGB values and so I have white text and black so this is offering me everything in between um, so yeah I mean that's it so but what we can do now is add a, a range selector to kind of control this craziness um, I believe I have to put it before uh, let's see and what I'm gonna do is just try and bring this effect into a localized area and as you can see here I've closed the effect down to um, just where I want it to be so at the moment I've only got two letters flashing and then I can offset this and so I can isolate those two letters and so you can see how working these two selectors if I change this around this isn't going to work at all so you need to be aware of the um, order of your uh, selectors and so just remember that selectors um, control the properties so um, you need two things in order to do a text effect you need a property and then you need one or multiple selectors to control how you're going to um, move that property around and in this case the fill color um, so i hope that was kind of useful and i think that kind of shuts us out in terms of text animation uh, thanks for watching as always i hope you like comment and subscribe i hate saying that so much but uh, it's kind of what i'm here for so uh thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next lesson Peace.